Alex Gleason created his map at the end of the 19th century as the basis for a timekeeping device that he patented. When someone files a patent application, the date that it's filed is recorded to avoid people stealing an idea while an application is processed or pending. As such, the date that a patent is filed and the date that it's finally allowed to stand are usually some time apart. It's the date allowed that matters most because it's the earliest date that the invention is considered to exist. The more eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the application date and the allowed date are some six months apart. Now you know why. If you want to patent something that includes parts that were invented by someone else, you must cite the patent number for each of those parts. You can't put a new patent on someone else's invention. You can only patent your own bits. When you apply for a patent, your application must cite the patent numbers for any part of your design that was made by someone else. At the bottom of many patent applications, you will see the numbers for those patents that are cited. So let's see if anyone else thinks Alex Gleason's layout is credible. If you run a search on the internet using Alex Gleason's patent number, you'll find that there are three patents that use his map. All granted in the 1970s for a device called a Universal Planisphere Complete Guidance and Computer System that was invented by one William A. Eisenhower. In the same way that the ground can be mapped as a planisphere, so too can the skies, and when the two are used together, they provide an extremely reliable indicator of exactly where you are on the face of the Earth. Most modern navigators rely on GPS, but any good navigator will at least have a working knowledge of the lights in the sky for emergencies. The sun, the moon and the stars all follow very precise patterns in the sky, and if you know where they are at any point in time, they can be used to calculate exactly where you are. Navigation needs only to head in the direction in which the compass is pointing and use the sun, moon and stars as markers to check that you don't stray too far from your planned course. Knowing where each of them are for any particular time and date has long been calculated by the astronomical and naval institutions of the world and to find where they are on any particular time and date we use an ephemeris. An ephemeris is a detailed set of tables from which a navigator can calculate their position anywhere on the Earth. During daylight hours, navigation is reliant on the sun and occasionally the moon. At night, the stars provide so much more information, but the calculations are still subject to mistakes. So in 1975, Mr. William Eisenhower patented his Universal Planisphere Complete Guidance and Computer System. It looks rather complicated, so let's simplify it a little. Essentially, it's a series of disks that are riveted together so they can rotate over each other. The principal disks show the sun and the moon positions in the sky, and two disks show the principal stars and constellations in the night sky. Another disk shows the surface of the Earth and the principal land masses. If you look closely, you'll recognize the land masses match those that are shown on the familiar AE map. In other words, the AE map and its relative proportions are considered to be accurate enough for the purposes of world navigation. The plans here can be found on the original patent application, but they don't do it much justice, so I figured it might be nice to see what a real one looks like. It measures 16 inches across, so as you can probably imagine, it doesn't contain nor does it need to show any inland details. For all practical purposes, it needs only to show the coastlines of the world continents. Remember, ships stop when they reach the land. For anyone who takes a moment to look at the patent application, you'll read that it can be used to show which lights in the sky are above which points on the earth, and conversely, which points on the earth are below the various lights in the sky. It shows what the sky looks like from the ground. So, in closing, 
the flat, circular map of the world seems to have a fairly reliable track record for the purposes of navigation around the world when coupled with the lights that we all see in the sky. The lights in the sky can tell us nothing in themselves of the shape of the Earth, but they certainly do provide us with a reliable reference system. Perhaps the lights in the sky have more to tell us.